Hello, welcome back to my channel. My name is Lace and today we have a Punishing Grey Raven video. This is the closed beta test version of Punishing Grey Raven and I know you guys can see all like the ugly stuff. I will filter that out very, very soon. But some of the topics that I wanted to cover actually involve like the UI itself. So just stay, stay with me guys. All right, back to it. Like I said, in this video, I'll be covering kind of like a game overview, kind of like a setup guide. I'll probably post a controller setup guide separately, but just know that it is possible. But otherwise, I will show you guys through every single menu that I can find as well as give my thoughts on what's going on here. So for you guys who have seen my previous Punishing Grey Raven video, I have actually shown like some gameplay and some walkthrough. So what I'm really going to focus on is seeing if they actually were able to like, you know, bring it one to one. And what I mean by one to one is I'm looking for like, you know, performance is a one to one. Does it feel as good as JP or Taiwan servers to play? Additionally, I'll also look at like localization and stuff like that. But otherwise, that's enough yapping. Let's get into the video. And the first thing I want to talk about is actually the controls and settings. The first settings I want to talk about are actually in the in-game settings itself. So if I click that cogwheel there and I come down to graphics, when you first enter the game, they actually put you onto recommend settings of probably around like three or two. So if I hit save on that, everything is going to go blurry. So if I go back to the main menu, this is kind of what it looks like. And honestly, it's really blurry. So I really would recommend like the moment you get to this screen, you go into the settings, you go into your graphics and then you bump this bad boy up and then you go ultra everything. Everything you built like a computer to go ultra high. I don't know if you guys can see it, but everything is ultra sharp now. Trust me guys, the difference is like immediate. All right, with that being said, let me hop out of that. And the next thing is let's have a look at the keyboard bindings. Depending on what you use, you can hit game controls over here and then you can hit the open advanced editor. It seems that Bluestacks has not like implemented any native control into this yet. So I, I can't do anything here. However, what I do want is that when we get into game, actually, let me just show you. So guys, I am in combat now. And what I want to do is I want to assign some keys. I'm going to assign a tap spot over here. Oh, okay. It got put over there, but I really want it over here. And I want another one over here, down there. Uh, yep, over here. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna set this to one and set this to two. And what that's gonna do is I'm gonna save that. Yep, and then hopefully that will apply. What that's gonna do is it's gonna let me switch characters with one and two. One, did you see that? I'm gonna hit two now, two. If you don't set it to one and two, you're gonna just have to click them. And you know, it's not bad considering you're probably gonna be like spam left clicking like this button over here. Otherwise the in-game controls for the normal attack, it's F and then for dodge, it's shift. So do you see that? that shift dodge. In other versions of the game, it's actually like E and stuff like that. But like a lot of the in-game controls that we have already in CBT are already quite good. So WASD, it's, you can see this is not moving over here, but it's actually working in game, which is a little bit weird. One for swap one, two for swap two, and then F for normal attack. So you can use that, but like, I actually prefer like clicking and then like clicking these. But to be honest, I think controller is the best way to go, but let's cover that in another video. All right, with that being said, let's hop back out into the menu and we will see what this game has to offer in CBT right now. All right, guys, we are in the main menu. I'm going to give you an overview of everything and then just some like example battles. Just showing you guys the different systems. So as you guys know, I've already played Taiwan before. I didn't get like ultra far, but I got like mid far. So I kind of already know what's going on, but let's walk through it. Okay, first let's start with the profile. That's up here, top left hand corner. You see that blue dot, there's always something to click. You've just got your name, you've got your ID and stuff like that. Here you can set your support character and here's where you enter your gift codes. On previous servers, we were actually given gift codes so that we can claim uh, S selectors. What that means is that we were we're able to actually pick an S class constructor. Aside from that, you can log out here. You can go down and you got your achievements. Like this is pretty straightforward. You get a whole bunch of gifts. Then you can also come down to display where you can start like flexing your characters. So if you got like triple S characters and you just chuck them on there. Oops, I'm going to put her there. Formation. Put another one over here, formation, save that. And then so when people go into your profile, you see them. That's really it. So again, the characters in this game are named constructs. And on that note, let's just go into the constructs. So over here, you see members constructs. Let's tap into that one. And then we've got a full list of constructs here. So you can see all of the characters. They actually have all of the characters here. On the left-hand side, you just select your character. But on the right-hand side is where it gets real spicy. What we have on the right-hand side is pretty much everything you really need to like juice them up. You've got the training where you can actually like upgrade them with like EXP pots and stuff. EXP is how you level your unit. So she is level 10 out of 80. I think she is bound by my own character level. By character level, I meant account level. So my account level is level 10. So she can only go up to level 10. Aside from that, you can go into awakening, but that's a little bit more end game. End game, mid game, depends on who you ask, but that's kind of it. On top of that, your second most useful upgrade is probably your promotions. Promotions are very, very similar to how they work in Ark Knights, where you have like a promotion requirement. So in this case, we need them to, to be level 20. However, sometimes the promotions are locked behind like something else, such as a story mode 
clear. So all you need for this one is actually cogs, which is up here, and then we can just rank up. Obviously, I don't have the requirements met, so she is still going to be a sergeant. Underneath that, we have evolve, which is kind of like your unbind or like where your dupes go. When you get more duplicates, you can like stack them up over here, like one, two, three, four, five, uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So if I get nine more, I can upgrade this Lucia from a B class to an A class. However, on top of that, each of these dupes actually do give stats, such as this one. The first one gives 10 attack. And then last, we've got skills, which is probably the most like straightforward one. So you just come in and then you like upgrade them. Most of them cost cogs. Some of them cost like skill points i believe we've got skill points down over here so as you can see cogs and skill points again so i'm a slam and upgrade that's what it, what it looks like it's a skill upgrade all right aside from that i'm going to take us back to the main menu and let's talk more about the main menu very very straightforward very similar to arknights actually even along the top we've got the premium currency we've got the stamina regeneration and we've got like the in-game currency this is kind of like your money that you use for everything your stamina you expend to do stages and your premium currency as you know like to refresh or like to do roll stuff like that in this game the premium currency is referred to as black cards i believe yep black cards there we go and you can use black cards to do like virtually anything on the left hand side we've got new so if there's any events or anything it will show up all over here aside from that this is just your notices like you guys already know what it is we've got friends uh i haven't unlocked it yet but who needs friends <laughs> am i right guys <laughs> then we've got rewards and events so i believe this is the sign in event so here you can see that we can log in for seven days and claim a bianca zero permanent character and then in round two what you can get is that if you log in for another seven days you get a gray feather zero skin for Bianca. On top of that, you also get all of these little ones over here as well. I saw this on Taiwan. I saw this on JP. I'm pretty sure everyone is going to get this. So no rush in login, I guess. So after we come out of the train menu, we also have the weapon. So very, very straightforward. You've got your weapon. You click it. You can train it up. You can level it a bit, enhance it. You know what I'm saying? This is going to push my weapon to 11, but I'm not going to do that. Underneath the weapons is probably the more important one, the equipped consciousness. So this is like where you have your set effects or like, you know, if you've played like the Epic 7 or like the, it's not Arknights, uh, what else? Like counter side summoners war you know like oh if you have two pieces of something you're going to get a set effect for example if i have two pieces of this one over here i'm going to get a 10 attack bonus heck to the yeah so if i have four pieces then i'm going to get an extra 50 hp wow that's so value there are definitely sets with like more like i guess interesting effects it's just that these are the starter ones these are like the most basic ones so don't worry about it so these consciousness they are denoted by their stars and their numbers so the number indicates the slot so you can see one two three four five six and then the star is just their rarity and how good they are. You can definitely upgrade these guys too. So if I click on it, I can train it. It's going to have an enhance button and I'm just going to like throw some of these guys in to enhance it. Aside from that, if you need more details, oh, I don't know, click the details button over here. This will just tell you a little bit about the character themselves and the energy coefficient. This is probably like the more important thing over here, the physical and the fire. There's definitely like elemental bonuses, stuff like that. So it's probably a good idea to like, you know, like get to know your characters. All right, jumping out of that. Lastly, we have coating, which is just your skin. So there are some skins that are unlockable within the game. So you can see something like that. The ones that don't have like drastic change. Okay, that's a drastic change. These ones that like, you can unlock in the game. However, we do have like the definitely a little bit more uh, flashier ones, which is nice. I'm not complaining. You know what I'm saying? All right. So what do we have left? We've got the battle, which we'll go into last. We've also got the missions and novice missions. So this is probably like one of the more important menus. And the reason is because like we don't have it right now, but there is actually one more button down here, which allows us to grind uh, black tickets. Honestly, I think it's not black tickets but it's instead purple tickets like these ones over here but essentially that's going to form part of like your rolling income every week again when the game comes out or if i push that far i'll show you guys what that looks like but it's pretty simple it's just a bunch of quests all right aside from that this is pretty straightforward you got your stories these are like your one time off quests and then you got your dailies and your weeklies let's get out of there and what do we have we have the novice mission so this is like gated by days and then as you can see we have the milestones down here so if i was to hit claim here i'm very far off the first one okay but yeah this is pretty common I don't think I need to like explain any more of this. You just gated over seven days. You got a bunch of missions. And then as you do more, you get more to work towards the milestones. And then you eventually get these items. All right, let's get out of there and let's go R&D research. Okay, it wants me to follow it base and they want me to do a weapon research. Okay, I will I will do what they said then, I guess. I can check the rules over here. Let's have a look at the gacha. So we've got the drop details. Okay, so this is probably one of the more interesting parts about the gacha. We have change set over here. So if I click change, set what this means is that i'm actually able to change the i guess rate up weapons that i want so you can not only do this for weapons but you can also do this for characters as well so for example i don't want wolf fang i don't want gloom light i want padma berserker and kuji no sada i'm gonna slap this bad boy select it and i'm gonna go back and then so when i have these rules apply they are going to apply for these guys over here so you guys can see choose any set 80 percent chance to receive the chosen 
6 star weapon when getting a 6 star weapon and guaranteed to receive 5 star or above weapon for every 10 research attempts. So the weapon banner actually has a guaranteed 6 star every 30 attempts in which when I get the 6 star I have an 80% chance of being what I want it to be. I wanted Padma so I selected Padma and I now have an 80% chance that it's going to be Padma. We've also got the beginner banner which is really great because you get an S rank in the first 40 rolls. This is really weird but like don't pay this any attention. This is a guaranteed S rank construct every 60 attempts. It's not. It's a, it's every 40. I think it's just a typo on there and, and so this is the purple ticket I'm talking about and then when you roll 40 times on this you will get an S rank construct which is one of these boys over here. So as you guys can see this is who's currently available in the beginner banner. As always guys I can't 100% guarantee that this is who we're going to get on release but this actually looks like identical to Taiwan. Honestly it's a pretty good guess. Alright so next we've got the event guaranteed and the special event floating guaranteed. Now these are really really interesting because what you can do is you actually have a choice. You make a choice. You can either try it in this one and 100% get a S rank in 60 attempts at a 0.5% rate. Let me find it. It should be over here. So as you can see here, it's this one. Base drop rate. Don't... <laughs> included guarantee don't even look at this this is the same thing that like genshin does it's like oh man including the guarantee you have a 1.9 percent chance to pull an s rank construct ignore it what you really should be looking at is this one the base drop what this means is that every single roll that you do you have a 0.5 percent chance of getting the s rank that's it so from 1 to 59 you have a 0.5 percent chance of getting an s rank on roll 60 it's going to be a hundred percent and so when you mash those two probabilities together with like some hardcore math you get 1.9 percent but don't be fooled by that. Like, you know, every time you roll, you don't have a 1.9%. You have a 0.5% chance. All right, so that's this one. Again, 0.5% chance to get your S rank and you only need 60 to pity an S rank. All right, let's get out of this and let's have a look at the other banner, which is this one over here. So you can see they're actually the identical characters. This one is a little bit different in that it has a different kind of pity system as well as a rolling chance. So for this one, you'll be guaranteed the S rank construct in between 80 to 100 attempts. So this is actually technically more than the other banner. However, the better thing about this one is I guess it's at a 1.5% chance. So over here, if you look at it, it is a 1.5% chance to get your S rank character. However, for both of these guys, the probability of you getting the rate up one is 70%. So even if you hit the 80 or 100, when you get an S rank, you will only have a 70% chance to hit the rate up character. And that 70% rate also applies to this one as well. So really, again, the only difference between the two is 0.5% rate up, 60 rolls to pity versus 1.5% to hit an S rank, as well as a pity of 80 to 100. All right, let's get out of here and have a look at the rest. We've got items. This is just like where you use your stuff. So just one thing that I need you guys to know is that when you get your like energy pots, the energy is not gonna like overflow over here or most of the time, Time, it's not going to. A lot of the time what's going to happen is you're going to claim like your energy daily pot and it's going to end up in the material over here as you can see. And as you can doubly see it actually expires so make sure that you guys use your energy pots from your items. Do not forget about them. This is precious energy. After that we've got shop purchase and this is just like your secret shop where you can buy a whole bunch of stuff. Some of it is actually on discount. Not going to tell you guys what to buy what not to buy but like for the most part I probably wouldn't buy most of it. I'll just have a quick flick through so you guys can see what's kind of available so you can see all these nice six star consciousness you guys don't want to upgrade those two star consciousnesses here is the coding shop aka your skin so if i click this one uh it's not showing us whoopsie but yeah as you can see there are a lot of skins and we'll see what they do about this one so after that we've got the exchange shop you get like a whole bunch of different mats and you can trade it for like other different kind of mats another one over here for the higher grade stuff and then you got your recycle shop which is it's guys it's just a lot of shops okay it's just like you're gonna get currencies and then you're gonna be able to like exchange it for weapons exchange it for more weapons exchange it for more memories or consciousness i don't know man i feel like they should stick with one kind of word either memory or consciousness this one saying memory the other saying consciousness it's kind of getting inconsistent my dudes all right last of all we've got the top up recharge which i don't think is actually available right now cash shop is not working but that's okay it is a closed beta it is what it is all right last of all let's get into some combat let me show you some of my sick moves let's freaking go all right before that maybe i should show you around these screens so as you can see this is like the navigation you're going through chapters what you have here is a normal button but if you click it you can see that there is a hidden button whoa so after a certain point you'll just unlock the hidden stages and it's essentially your 
hard stages. That's really it. However, the hard stages are really interesting. A lot of the time you're actually playing as the bosses you fight. But yeah, other than that, you guys already know, click into this one. There is a collection progress, which is like your, you got to get your three stars in like 12 stages. Three times 12 is 36. I got an A in math. And then so therefore I can claim all of this and it's super fast, not like an Argonites, which makes me wait like four hours. All right, let me get out of there and I will show you guys the resources. You guys already know what this is. I'm going to grind for my EXP. I'm going to grind for my skills. I'm going to grind for cogs. I'm going to grind for like literally everything. And then let's get into the challenge or the challenge war. And this is a lot of stuff. So I've not like unlocked any of this, but these are essentially like different game modes, like the end game loop. There's actually quite a lot to do. And a lot of these are actually tied to like your rolling currency. But yeah, these are the different ones. I'll probably make a follow-up video and show you guys like what I find over here. Okay, let's get out of there. And I think that is actually it. Let's get into a battle. Holy moly. It's taken me so long to get through all of these systems. And it's kind of a good thing, right? Like, because like these systems is a lot of it, but it's not like ultra, ultra complex. In Counterside, although I do like the game now, I found that it was very overwhelming. In Punishing Grey Raven, it doesn't feel overwhelming at all. It's all very, very simple. There's just a lot of it. I guess you could say the same about Counterside. I just wasn't big brain enough. All right, back to what you guys already know. Three stars, you got to clear on these conditions. Some of the localization is a bit weird, like die less than once. What's less than once? It just means don't die. They could have just told me not to die and I, I wouldn't have died, okay? All right, aside from that, let's go into battle, battle preparations and we're going in. As you can see here, we do have an extremely dangerous because my BP is 363, but they're recommending 450. But I'm a mad lad. I freaking do it anyway, you know? So just showing you guys some of the cutscenes is quite nice. Like it's a little bit animated. The text is decent. Like I guess I focus on these things because, you know, after a couple of the new games like Alchemy Stars, I feel like some of the newer games have dropped the ball on like even just like text choices and stuff. Like this kind of makes sense. And it kind of does like, you know, fit the whole feel of this game. So yeah, from a cutscene point of view, like it's very, very simple. Simple. It is what it is. But otherwise, I'm just going to skip this and we are going to go into combat. You know what? I'm going to make everything else disappear like that. And that's a way better experience for you guys. All right. So these creepy guys are walking towards me. So you can see before they attack, they actually emit like a red light. And so that kind of gives you an indication of like when you should dodge. So basic command. So you've got your skill orbs over here. You've got a red, a blue, and a yellow. And then you've got the characters that you can switch into one and two over here. So if I hit one, I get this chick. And then I hit two, I get this chick. And as you can see, the skills swap out and you can stack orbs. So if there are three three orbs, you get like a stronger version of like the original base skill. So BAM! On top of that, when you activate three orbs of the same color, so did you see that my Lucia was actually flashing? So what that actually was, so I'm going to go back to it. So you see that's glowing. It's, so that's called QTE. And I've just missed my opportunity to use it. But essentially what's happening is that if I use three of the same orbs, so let me try to get it up again. And so if I have three blue orbs and I use them all, it's going to give me the ability to QTE. And so I'm going to do it now. So it means that my live, my blue character is going to come in and do some cool stuff while I keep going. And then she's going to pop out again. So that doesn't make me change into the character herself, but rather it just, it's kind of like a special extra thing. So I'm going to come into here so I can see, I can get like a combo of like three blues. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to use it. I'm going to use live blue again, QTE. That's what I'm talking, baby. And then I'm just going to kill him. I'm just going to kill him off because that's how it is. So again, basic controls. I've got my dash on like shift. And then I've got a bunch of combo orbs. You want to play match three. It's freaking bejeweled out here. You know what I'm saying? Like that. You can switch characters up here over here. And then you've just got your normal attack over here. You've got your dash. I put it on shift because that's just what I'm used to. And then you just saw me go into like some hyperspace like slow-mo mode. So before I mentioned that when they're about to hit you, you see like this flashing red. So what you want to do is you want to do like perfect dodges. So you want to dodge at the very last second because what that's going to... What that's going to let you do is you're going to be able to enter that like super slow-mo world like this. And then you're going to be able to like slash them and like, you know, hack at them and do a whole bunch of stuff to them. And they can't do anything to you because like, you know, they're slow mode and you're not. And let's just finish off the stage because that is how it is. I think this is actually the exact same stage that I showcased in Taiwan server. That's that's pretty funny, actually. But yeah, so, you know, hack and slash. You can see the yellow numbers coming out sometimes before the crit. But otherwise, what you want to want to do is like, you know, you want to stack these like orbs and then you want to like take advantage of the QTE and then sometimes swapping characters if one like character doesn't seem to be doing too well. Again, like I said, there are different archetypes, there are different elements. So they do like have some one works better than the others kind of thing. But otherwise, as you guys can see, it is pretty centered on like, you know, you got to dodge. If you don't dodge, you'll freaking die. I can tell you guys now, like on Taiwan, like, oh my God, if I didn't dodge, I died. All right, let's finish this stage off just for like a completion kind of sake. Um, going to skip over this. I don't want to spoil you guys and bam. That is the completion of a stage. 
Oh man, she's probably one of my favorite like main characters. All right, you guys saw me. I failed one of them. I couldn't clear it in 150 seconds because I was too busy freaking trying to show you guys some things. But otherwise, you're gonna unlock a lot of this stuff. Don't be alarmed by these like comms requests. It's just them being like, hey, you've unlocked guilds or something like that. All right, let me accept that. And it's just gonna take me somewhere. So how are we getting along with the constructs? All right, so I think she's just going to, she's gonna give me black cards. So I'm gonna take that. Yeah, let's freaking go. Okay, Cecilia's class unlocked. Let's go into battle. We've got challenge and this is actually really really good because this is where you can kind of like start doing your trainings and stuff Actually, I don't think her name is Cecilia. I think her name is Celica. Let me go. Yeah, it's Celica. I'm so sorry lady I'm so sorry. All right, so here we've got our basic battle as well as our constructs. So constructs is kind of like you're training in these constructs, but this one is kind of like all the basic stuff. So I'm gonna go into basic dodge. You actually get first clear rewards, which is really, really good. And I'm just gonna go into battle preparations and we are going to go learn about basic dodging. Not 100% sure I need this one, but I'll just show you guys what it is because like, you know, I think these are really, really good training like kind of courses. If you are having trouble, like I would definitely recommend doing these. And even if you aren't, I would recommend doing it for the first time rewards anyway i digress i will save all that for like the beginner's guide let's freaking keep going okay play and then whoa okay so ignore my sissy little howl just then and look at this message what i didn't mention before was that there actually is a dodge gauge so you can't just like dodge unlimited and i am in that freaking hyper time traveling space warp state Woo! And when, okay, so let me explain. That was a perfect dodge just then. If you guys need to like rewind a little bit, that that was a dodge. I didn't take any damage. But what I did forget to say is that you can't just stay in like, you know, hyper time travel space mode like for forever. There is actually a cooldown. And so even if you're like a pro gamer, esports kind of guy, like you can't just, you know, you can't just abuse it. And that's the end of the stage. And I'm gonna say that's probably the end of the video because like, oh my God, another 40 minute video. I don't know how much this is gonna cut down to, but it's gonna be a lot. Actually seeing something over here makes me want to like explain a little bit so this is actually a character shard and what you can do is that you can actually farm a lot of these character shards to eventually either a unlock characters or to be like upgrade characters i'm just gonna get out of here i'm gonna return i'm gonna go back to my main i'm gonna go into members constructs and i'm gonna go into train here and then we're going back to the evolve and you can see that i actually have two of these shards to put into my padma i don't know why they named her padma it's so similar to padme so i'm just gonna activate it boom i get 50 hp and then boom i get five defense so as you can see we're making our way downtown walking fast and then eventually we're going to get from a b class to an a class and then i believe like you can get to s class and maybe even triple s class all right i swear to god guys that is the end there is nothing more to show you guys i don't think <laughs> unless i unlock those like battle modes but i don't think i'm going to be able to get there today honestly my voice is so sore i spoke so fast i'm sorry but there was so much to cover and i didn't want to make another 28 minute video like my alchemy stars one but with that being said let's wrap up the video because i don't have my much else to say except for my secret message which is that Padma is cute guys tell me that Padma is cute look I can even mingle with her bruh look at that there's a friendship gauge I'm gonna friendship the heck out of Padma ah somehow I rambled on okay if you guys could drop that secret message down in the comments below I would really appreciate that guys I just don't want the video to end yeah <laughs> You know how I feel. Anyway, guys, that secret comment down in the comments, I would really appreciate that because it means that you've made it to the end of the video. And as you guys can tell, I spend a lot of time on these videos, so I would really appreciate it. Otherwise, you guys already know what to do. If this video was helpful or it was kind of entertaining, consider a like, a sub, a comment, any of that. But otherwise, as always, thank you guys so much for watching and I'll catch you guys in the next video. Bye-bye.